Hello and welcome back to another Revit Architecture 2009 CAD clip talking about stairs and in this uh, example we'll show you how you can quickly draw a stair like this going from level 1 up to level 2 putting a little winder there um, as we go around the corner. So this is the stair we're going to build um, and I'm going to start by just deleting that stair. So um, I can draw this from my level 1 or my level 2. I'm going to go to my level 1. I've got some reference planes already kind of placed in there. Okay. If you go to my level 2 you'll see that there's one that shows the top of the stair and I've just got you know those objects in there. I could probably go in here and round these off to be a little more um, rounder numbers. So we'll just do that while we're in here. Okay. And then back to my level 1. I'm going to start by going to modeling and then say stairs. Okay. I'm going to use the boundary and riser option in this case. So I'm going to say riser and I'm going to place one right here. Click, click. I know at the top of the stairs and then I'm going to hit escape. Okay. And now I'm going to use my offset tool. So I'm say offset. I'm just drawing lines, right? and I'm going to offset by 11 inches and now this is you have to be careful you don't offset a line on top of a line so you ha don't do this too quickly you just kind of have to take your time notice it's counting down four risers five risers 11 remaining okay click on there then I draw another riser over here now this winder doesn't have to be right at this intersection okay you can set these to uh, risers back a little bit so if you need some room sometimes there's an inch or two of space in there you can do that as well okay back to my offset command offset by 11 inches again be very careful you don't go to the wrong side and offset a line on top of a line because it will cause you problems to no end in all if um, all else fails just delete them all okay just go in and grab them all and then delete them and then start again if you're not sure so now I've got 14 down, 2 remaining. So I'm going to add in my risers that are going from here somewhere in the middle there. Okay, and I'll be able to um, draw those actually quicker and more centered if I draw my boundary line. So I'm going to leave these two winder steps and I'm going to go straight to boundary. The key is with boundary is you have to stop and start wherever the uh, stringer will go from one slope to another or from flat to slope. So I'm going to actually draw this all the way to here like you might think you want to do and then all the way to there. We're forming and then I can draw another one that goes from here to here and then another one from there to there. So those are boundary lines, escape, escape. They don't have to be a closed polygon. They can even extend a little bit beyond there if you want to extend that stringer. So these, think of your boundaries as your stringers. Now the key here is you have to break that at that point. So I could have either, either drawn it separate segments or I can go in after the fact and say split right there. Split again right there. Now I can click modify. So this is a segment this is a segment, this is another segment, again, again, and again. If you create a little toe space or whatever you, you set this back, you're going to want to split there and you'll have a little segment as well. Okay. So wherever the stringer is going to change angles, uh, that you need a split line in there. So now I can go in and draw my extra riser lines because my snap is going to find that midpoint right there. Isn't that nice? Draw another riser line from here to there. Click. Escape, escape. I can go to a 3D view and see what I've been drawing here. And I can edit this from 3D if I want. Okay, once I'm in sketch mode, I can even edit it from level 2. So it says 17 risers created minus 1. So I've actually got one too many risers. Okay, so I'm going to click on this guy and delete it. Now it says 16 risers don't zoom in too far, zero remaining. So I need to grab this guy, pull it back. Grab this boundary line, pull it back. Again, I can actually extend this out a little bit if I want to have a little extra stringer on there. So let's do that just for the fun of it. Okay, I, I can also do that top to help me kind of clean up where this last riser is. The other thing we always do is check our railing type. Default means it's going to use the last railing type I specified with my railing tool. Okay, This is railing within the stair um, sketch mode. If I go out and actually draw a railing and then select a type, that last one I used is actually 
the what default is otherwise I can go in here and pick whatever one I want so I can trust the fact that the last railing I did is okay I'll use default hit OK always check your stair properties go in here make sure you're going from the right level to the right level this is my type of stair hit edit in here of course all your great information on treads risers stringers Okay, we've talked about this and or we'll continue. Notice my maximum riser height is actually set to be 7 and 7 eighths, even though it's called the 7 inch, so I might even go in and rename that if I want. So this all looks good. I can hit OK, OK, and it's telling me that I wanted 16 I, and I got 16, so that's perfect as far as risers go. Okay, hit OK, finish the sketch, creates that stair for me, go to my 3D view, there's my stair. Now, what's the problem? Well, stair is going the wrong way. Okay, go back to my level two. I can pick on this stair from there and hit my little flip arrow, flip. Okay, and I could do that from level one or level two. Go to my 3D view, and there's my nice stair with uh, with our winder in there and the railing that we specified. And I'm not crazy about how this uh, little intersection worked out here, so I can probably solve that by splitting the railing as well. In my 3D view, I'll click on that railing and I'll say edit. Okay, then I'll go down to my level one and I'll use my split tool and I will edit that railing. Click, okay, put a split, finish the sketch, and then go back to my 3D view. And that is not quite what I wanted. And there's uh, an interesting point. I'm glad we've kind of stumbled across this. It it really matters where the split uh, is on this. So I'm going to click on that railing, go back into edit again. I'll do this from my level one. Now I'm zoomed in here. Notice that I split that right there. But the interesting thing is, if you pull this back from here, let's do this. Let's bring it way back. I'm zooming in. I'm going to make it so that the break takes place uphill at the more or less at the high point above the riser rather than at it or below watch we'll get a little different result there's a good tip for you so finish the sketch and go back to my 3d view and then we get a little different configuration so that's a great example of providing a split for the railing okay and this also may apply to stairs as the boundary and where the split actually uh, is positioned uh, with regards to the uh, adjacent riser.